Hey guys, today I'm going to be comparing the Rokinon 14mm versus the Nikon 14-24. These are both great wide angle lenses, especially for astrophotography, but we're going to look at some of the key differences between both lenses and see which lens really prevails, and I'm sure you can guess, but for the price difference, it's going to be pretty remarkable how well the Rokinon works. Don't forget, Tamron has their own wide angle lens, the 15 to 30 millimeter, and I do have a comparison video of the Tamron and the Nikon. Believe it or not, the Tamron actually wins. You can go check that one out on my YouTube page. Also, Sigma just announced their own 14 to 24 f2.8 lens. So, personally, if I were you, if you have the Rokinon, you're considering making the jump, or you haven't bought a wide angle lens yet, I would hold off until we see what the Sigma is going to do. But anyway, let's get into the comparisons. For all of these comparison images, the Nikon will always be on the left, the Rokinon always on the right, and this is a great example right here. These were both shot in RAW, converted to JPEG, uh, 20 second shutter speed, ISO 1600 f2.8. The Nikon is considerably brighter. Notice how much darker the vignette is on the corners of the Rokinon. Also notice the white balance shift. The Nikon has much more of a blue purple tint, whereas the Rokinon is greener and yellower. Those are the, the major differences that you're going to find each time is simply that the Rokinon renders colors differently than the Nikon and it has this very heavy vignette and that's going to cause a lot of problems and we'll get into that here in a minute. But at a glance you can see they both look okay. Uh, if I go back here, I want to show you a coma example next. I know a lot of people want to see how well these lenses do in regards to coma or astigmatism. If I zoom in real close, we're cropped way into the upper right hand corner and the Nikon has a little bit of distortion here. The Rokinon also has a little bit of distortion, but again, I'm so far cropped in, most people never notice or care about this uh, bit of coma. My main problem is simply how dark the Rokinon is again, and there's kind of this splotchy, grainy texture throughout the image. That's because of that heavy vignette again. Because less light reached the corners of the photo, when I had to bring up the exposure more to try and equalize it with the Nikon, we start to get some problems. And that problem comes back again and again with the Rokinon, and really that's my biggest problem. I want to show you another example of just how extreme the, the vignette is on the Rokinon. If I zoom out here, oops, I switched. Alright, in this case the Rokinon is on the left and the Nikon's on the right. Sorry about that. But the Nikon again has a much more subtle vignette just in the extreme corners. The Rokinon, it seems like almost the entire image is just covered in vignette. Also, again, note the warmer, greener colors on the Rokinon versus the cool blues and purples on the Nikon. Again, white balance really isn't a big deal when you're shooting at night, provided you shoot in RAW. So what I wanted to do was see, you know, can I get the exact same white balance on the Rokinon as the Nikon just by adjusting it in camera RAW. So that's what I did for this example here and well I'll let you figure it out which one is which <laughs> it's very hard to tell and that's kind of surprising you would think for such a vast color rendering difference that uh, it would be hard to fix but I think it's about 500 degrees Kelvin warmer than the Nikon and you needed to add about a plus 10 purple tint so to remove that green uh, in this case Let's see if I back out of here, which one was which. This is the Nikon Rokinon, so this is the Nikon now, this is the Rokinon. And if we really notice closely here, there's more green on the edge of the image. That's probably a combination of the vignette as well as I probably just should have dragged the purple slider a little bit further. But again, if I go in these extreme corners, and again, this might be hard to see in the video, but the Rokinon is noticeably grainier, noticeably more splotchy, and that again is the biggest problem with the Rokinon. But that comparison image is pretty good. It shows you if you're a competent editor, you can make the Rokinon virtually look like the Nikon and save yourself a lot of cash. One problem you will have though is if you're shooting a lot at night on a warm night, you're going to start getting amp glow. And hopefully this will translate well in the video. But notice how bright these lower corners are. I had to fix the vignette, but in the process, 
this hideous purple glow comes up and you can probably see that a lot better now and notice how much more grainy that is that's the trick with astrophotography especially a lot of people there's a lot of tutorials about reducing grain I've done a lot myself but the single best tip you can possibly do to increase the image quality is simply gather more light and that's exactly what happened here the Nikon has less vignette so more lights able to reach the sensor in the corners you get much better color rendition much less noise compared to the Rokinon and again that's that's the problem with the Rokinon if you can get around that hideous vignette that ultimately causes you a lot of problems like amp glow in the corners the Rokinon will do a good job the best way to get around that is probably to buy a star tracker and if you've watched any of my recent videos they've all pretty much mentioned star trackers uh, these are really magical devices that will allow you to capture much more light in your photos and overall get much higher quality images and I do have a star tracker tutorial on my website which I update pretty frequently as I learn more but all of these photos here were taken with a star tracker so if you want to learn more I'll have a link in the description but you can get this iOptron Sky Tracker Pro which is the one I use for all these photos for about $280 I want to say plus the Rokinon which costs about $350 and compare that to the nearly two thousand dollars you need to spend on the Nikon and you can get comparable results for you know less than half the price ultimately that is what I would recommend before you go out and buy a big expensive new lens look into getting a star tracker because you can go out right now and get the Nikon or pre-order the Sigma but it doesn't change the fact that you will always be limited to at best 20 second exposures at night simply because the stars will start to move and 20 seconds that's not nearly enough time to capture enough light so you're going to again notice amp glow in the corners uh, heavy grain throughout the photo you're going to be losing detail in the Milky Way and your colors aren't going to be as vibrant because the camera had to amplify this faint signal once you get the star tracker you open up a whole new world of possibilities and instead of shooting at uh, let's say 20 seconds again you're able to shoot for four minutes or even longer and you're going to notice the Milky Way has a ton more detail the grain is virtually gone if you had bad amp glow in the corners where a lot of light wasn't reaching now there's tons of light hitting there and that problem just vanishes so no more having to do fo uh, median stacking in Photoshop no more having to do dark frame subtractions all kinds of other noise reduction techniques all you have to do is take a longer photo the only caveat with that is you're gonna have to blend two exposures so I would take a let's say a four minute long photo for the foreground four minute long photo for the stars and blend the two thankfully I've got a YouTube tutorial that covers that process very clearly so that kind of simplifies that whole process um, so here we are at the end of the video and the Rokinon does a serviceable job especially considering the price again just to show you, you're gonna have that heavy vignette on the Rokinon which as we discussed is a major issue and the color balance which isn't a big deal those are the only two real differences between both lenses uh, if you don't count in the massive price difference with all that being said if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment and be sure to go over to my website look more into the star tracker tutorial or check out some of my other YouTube videos and moving forward into 2018 that's really what I'm going to be focusing on simply because it is truly a game-changing thing for astrophotographers